Hello, everybody. All right, welcome. Welcome to this uh, series of short videos, which I'm calling the Goethe Project. And the subtitle is, Where's Goethe when you need him? And um, and I'm we're back, I guess we're back in video webcam communication um, for many of us because uh, the, all the Michael Jekyll community has been uh, meeting recently. Um, I'm recording this for anyone listening or watching this in the future. I'm recording this on the 9th of April 2020. So that's three weeks now of um, complete isolation for myself and for many of you watching, uh, all those watching in the present, as it were, in these, these next few days and weeks. Um, you know, we're in the middle of this. Um, it's a really bad crisis and I'm sure you're all having, well, facing the same things that I am and um, and I hope, but I do hope you're all well and your family's well and you're keeping safe. Um, so what am I doing here? Well, I, a lot of the Michael Chekhov community has been uh, contributing different things online, uh, classes and um, lots of other material. And we've been meeting up and figuring out what the hell to do, how to teach acting in this um, new environment or how to just pause and hope that things uh, return to what used to, we used to call normal <laughs> um, fairly soon. But anyway, I was thinking about what I might do. Um, and rather than go to the uh, sort of contribute to the acting um, well, it, it seemed to me to make more sense to do something a bit different and, and, and add to what's been already uh, contributed by so many. And in fact, it's something which doesn't have to be, is not completely connected to acting. Um, because Goethe has been a, a, a constant um, inspiration for myself and for Thais over the years at Michael Chekhov Brazil. Um, as we go more into the work, the Michael Chekhov work, and more into Goethe's um, studying him, we, we, we just continue to find connections. And he's, he's just become a big inspiration uh, in many, many, many different ways. Um, I've got a picture one for you. <laughs> so, um, and one of the things uh, which is very dear to us and which is um, very precious is his way of uh, the method he developed for observing nature. Um, and so what I thought I might do is, is um, produce these little videos which will teach you or guide you through a little tutorial to guide you through the process. Um, the, it's a very beautiful little method. There's four little steps. And so there's four little videos. Actually, there's more videos because I'm explaining what to do. But there are actually four videos for the actual exercise. Um, and it's very beautiful. And the, the Chekhov people among you will, of course, know the concentration exercises that Michael Chekhov gave the, uh, with ob using objects, uh, which we do, you work with a lot in, um, in my, at Michael Chekhov Brazil. In fact, when, when our students are on their two-month training, um, they have to do a concentration exercise every day, uh, use an object every day, and do that. That's like a sort of meditation they use. So, and the but the origin the origins of those exercises almost certainly would be would have been these exercises, uh, this exercise, this method of of observing the the natural world, uh, which actually is as relevant now as ever, because what what Goethe was doing really was. Uh, reacting to the the scientific methods that had been developed um, since you know throughout the early enlightenment and so forth um, and he felt they were very dry and very analytical as if it was a as if uh, me observing something in nature was a one-way thing where I'm the I, I'm the scientist and I'm observing nature so it's just a one-way uh, dynamic and Goethe felt this was, I mean, just from his own experience, felt this was lacking in something, that when he observed a plant, uh, he realized that it wasn't just him sort of an, um, intellectually understanding what all the elements of it and, and analyzing it and a sort of dry intellectual exercise. It was actually something which was a, was a two-way dynamic, that the plant was revealing itself to to him, or that he was transforming, tra transformed by the uh, by the activity of of being with the plant, as it were. So he felt that this was a sort of two way dynamic, um, uh, and he, in fact he, he developed a he, he called this uh, this 
as a sort of general title of, of, for this type of work that he, this type of um, scientific study, he called it uh, Zarte Empirie, which uh, in, in English would be de delicate empiricism. So it's not so the empiricism is there. You want to find out exactly what how the how the world is, but at the same time, it has to be delicate or soft. Zarte, zarte also means soft. Um, so it's a soft empiricism or a delicate empiricism uh, that he was. Uh, um, he was bringing. There's also a, quite a well-known quote which which illustrates uh, what what he meant by this. Okay, uh, this or, or what he was trying to um, um, get across in this idea that it's a two-way dynamic. Uh, when I'm observing the the natural world, something in me changes. So he wrote, um, "Man knows himself only to the extent that he knows the world." He becomes aware of himself only within the world, and aware of the world only within himself. And this is the next the next phrase is the one. Every new object, well contemplated, opens up a new organ of perception within us. All right. So that's that's in a nutshell what I've just been talking about. Anyway, it's a very beautiful method that anyone can do. And um, as I said, there are four stages. Um, and you're going to use a plant um, to to experiment to try this out to actually do this okay so I prepared these videos and here's a guide to what these videos are okay they're on the same timeline you I mean if you just leave this on it'll you'll just go through the whole thing um, so the second video the one after this one is is preparation um, I'll just it's very simple there's nothing uh, there's nothing major you need it's all very uh, simple stuff um so i will um, explain all what you need to do to prepare in the next video and then when you're done with that one you have to go videos three to six uh, that's the actual exercise okay so that needs to be done in one sitting okay you can do that you can watch this video and watch the preparation video then you can spend a week <laughs> messing around trying to find the time to do it and then you can do but once you sit down with video three you want to go through to six in one go okay so that's um that's very important all right and then the last video is actually an invitation uh, because, as I'll explain then, it, it, I, I'm, I, I'm doing this, uh, preparing these videos so that you can work um, in your own time and be very flexible. And it's an asynchronous, as we've all learned this word recently, um, uh, tutorial. But at the same time, I do want, I do really want to connect with you. So what I'm doing uh, is organizing uh, weekly meetings for people who have done the, done the, um, done the exercise and we can share and talk about good and, and check off and all sorts of other things um, so uh, that's I think all I needed to share with you yes um, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, one little disclaimer I'm not um, I'm not an expert <laughs> or a historian or anyone I'm just an uh, what they used to call an amateur before it became a sort of and non-professional, not very good person, but an amateur in the sense of a lover of, of Goethe. I, I stand before you <laughs> simply as someone who's self-taught himself this work, knows it quite well, and love it. So, and that's my only claim to um, any, any authority here. So, I'm. Uh, I just wanted to say that I'm not an actually a, a, um, a good expert or historian. I don't know his dates properly or his life. I mean, I do know bits about his life, but because uh, I've studied, but only as an amateur. All right, so I think that's it for now. Um, so go on to the next video when you're ready um, and see what you're going to need to um, before you start the uh, actual exercise. All right, so I'll see you there.